Demonstration Nugget, App Engine Basics in Python. Hello, everybody. This is Ben Finkel, and in this nugget, let's get hands-on with the actual Python project that we want to start building in this course. We'll go over the overall project structure, where the files are located and how they're organized. We'll deploy it locally in our development server. Then we'll deploy it out to the cloud and run it in the cloud. And then finally, we'll look at the skeleton, the framework of the code that we're going to flesh out. So let's take a look at the cool application that we're going to develop throughout this course, the Achieved It Achievement Tracker for Life. This is going to be the awesome new social media craze. You just don't know it yet. And we are going to develop the whole thing inside of the Google Cloud Platform. It's going to be super easy to do. And we're going to walk you through it step by step. But I just wanted to take a moment to kind of walk through the application as we have it laid out. Just a static version of the application. This isn't dynamic yet. Just so we can see what we're going to do, what we're going to learn, and how everything is going to work together. Now, the Achieved It application itself is split up really into three different sections. We've got a header section up here. And this has got our logo and our title as well as our navigation bar. Then we've got our content pane down here. And this is going to have all the cool dynamic stuff that's going to update on the fly as we search and navigate and move around our application. And then lastly, if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see that we've got a small footer section. This has got just our help and about as well as our social media links. So the footer section and the header section are going to repeat. They're going to be the exact same on page after page after page. Well, the content section is what's going to update dynamically as we navigate around the website. Pretty cool, pretty standard kind of web application framework, right? And we're going to use the Jinja templating language, which is built into the Google App Engine runtime in order to build this structure out really easily and real cleanly. You'll see that in a moment when we look at the template files. Now, the site itself is going to be pretty simple, but we're going to show off a lot of key features about Google App Engine. The home page here, you can see we've got a list of popular achievements that pop up. So the home page is going to primarily be comprised of a data store query that's going to pull up the list of the five most popular achievements so that we can list them here on the home page. Anyone who comes to this page can see what the most popular achievements are, and that'll always update dynamically. On the right hand side, you can see that we've got a couple of panels of uh, metrics, of aggregated counts. So we've got a statistics that's going to tell us some overall counts about our data store, as well as some leaderboards showing us top scores and top contributors. Again, a couple of data store queries are going to populate that data for us so we can see how you interact with and get data out of the data store and into your web applications. We've also got the achievements page. And similar to the home page, this is going to be based on a data store query. But in this case, as you can see, we've got an actual search form, a cool little search form here that the user is going to be able to use to search for matching data store entities. So they'll be able to find achievements inside of the data store that match these various different um, parameters that they can fill in. So we'll see how to build dynamic queries and pass those in. And from here, you'll even have the opportunity to both like as well as complete yourself an achievement. So you can add an achievement to your own profile indicating that you've completed it, or simply like an achievement to indicate that you think it's a cool achievement and you want people to know that, hey, you're giving that achievement a thumbs up. Next to that, we've got the Achievers page. And similar to the Achievements page that we just looked at, this is a data store query based on a form that the user is going to be able to fill out. But it's going to let them search for profiles, for people, Achievers, inside of the database. And you can do a similar kind of thing. You're going to be able to click a link and follow these individuals and add them to your follow list. And that, in turn, is going to allow you to get email notifications when this person completes a new achievement. So we'll be able to see push notifications in the task queue so that emails get generated to you when someone that you're following completes a new achievement, which is pretty awesome, right? And it's really easy to do with Google App Engine. And then lastly, you may have noticed that everything we've done here, we didn't authenticate to the application in order to do. This was available to the public, but we're going to want some authentication, particularly when we want to build up our own profile. So we'll need the ability to log in here. We're going to have a login panel, and this is what the login panel on our local development machine looks like. You'll learn more about this in our authentication nuggets. But if I log in, you can see that now I've got a few new menu options, including the ability to log out, as well as an option to look at my profile. And this is where you're going to be able to fill out your own profile, including see who you're following, and add new achievements to the data store. So you'll be able to insert and update achievement records in the data store. Down below, you'll be able to see a list of your own achievements, the achievements that you've completed that have been um, approved by the administrator. And what do I mean by approved by the administrator? Well, if I log out quickly here, and go to log back in. And this time I'm going to say I'm going to sign in as an administrator user. You can see I've got one more option available to me that's only available to admins. That's the admin page. And on the admin page, what you're going to be able to do 
is see achievements that have been entered by users and approve them or reject them. So this is how you can do some quality control filtering on the achievements that get entered. And more importantly, it's going to show off pull queues for us inside of the task queues. We'll use a pull queue to get the list of pending achievements, display them on this page, and then you'll be able to approve them before they show up in the wider site. All right, so hopefully you're excited to build your own Achieved It app and uh, explode onto the social media scene with this cool new application. But Rome wasn't built in a day. Let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk about how this thing is actually constructed. I'm going to drop down to my file system here and take a look at the file structure for the application that we were just running. Now, it's not very complicated. In fact, it's the opposite of complicated. It's very flat and very simple. Compared to some other client languages that you might be working with, the Python projects tend to be very straightforward and very simple. Basically, you've got your root folder. I've named it GAE Nuggets, but you can name it whatever you want. That's pretty unimportant. And inside of that root folder, you need a couple of key files or a couple of key features. First is app.yaml. That's the application and web deployment configuration file for Python. Talk about that in more depth in the configuration and management nugget. We'll just take a quick look at it here. I have also got a main.py file, and that's the main Python application that is going to handle or respond to my requests. Now, I can, of course, make this more complicated. I can have many Python files and route requests to all those different Python files. And the larger and more complex your application gets, the more likely you are to have multiple of these things. But for the purposes of this course, we're just going to keep it simple, stupid kiss, right? We're just going to have one main.py file with all of our Python code in it, and then an app.yaml file to configure our application, and finally, all of these template files. And the template files are those Jinja templates I was just talking about. And very important, you'll notice that there's one base template. That's an important template that we're going to need to have. Base template is going to have our header and our footer defined in it. And then it just leaves a blank spot open in the middle for the content of the page. And the, um, the Jinja templating engine takes whichever page you're loading, profile, home, achievers, etc., and it loads that template into the base template, combines it all together. So we only have to have our header and our footer defined once right there in base.template. Now, to work with these files inside of Google App Engine, the first thing that we need to do is we need to load it up into the Google App Engine launcher. The Google App Engine Launcher is what's going to allow us to run this application both locally as well as deploy it up to the cloud. Let's take a look first at how we run it locally. If you watched our Getting Started Nugget, you should have this application already downloaded and you should have a good feel for how this works. You can actually even see the old uh, Getting Started application already here inside of my Google App Engine Launcher. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click and say Add Existing. I've got an existing application that I want to add and I'm going to browse out to the path where it's stored. I've got it stored right here. This is what we were just looking at inside of the Finder. Choose that root folder. Remember, I called it GAE Nuggets. And it's going to automatically decide on an admin port and a regular port, which are perfectly fine. And then notice it's using Dev App Server 1.0 as the runtime. I'll click Add. And now you see that this is listed down here on my list of applications. Once it's here, I can simply click the Run button on it. And that's actually going to load it in the local development runtime environment. That's how we were just running it, just viewing it a moment ago. If I then click the Browse button up here, that's going to launch my web browser to the port that it signed it up on, 9080 in this case, and you can see we're right back in the application like we were before. Now it's important to note that this front end is just a high-level front end sitting on top of your code structure. So if we come here and we stop, we can actually remove this, simply click File Remove Application, and it'll warn us, it'll say that the on-disk content will not be modified. So all I'm doing by removing it, I'm not deleting my application or anything. I'm simply removing it from the front end here. And we can see that we can also launch this straight from the command line. I'll show you how this works. So if I run dev underscore app server dot pi, which as long as your GAE SDK updated your paths properly, you should be able to execute this command. I can pass it in the root folder of my project. And it's going to start running a server. And you can see here it started module default on localhost 8080. That's the default port because I didn't specify one. So I'll just go ahead and copy this into my clipboard. Launch it in my browser here. And just like we saw before, again, it's running it locally on port 8080, regardless of the fact that I didn't load it or I removed it from this app engine launcher. Now, I think the user interface is a little bit easier to use, and it's got a few more um, features that are, that are quick and button click away. But certainly everything you can do there, you can do from these command line utilities. When you're done, just got to make sure that you stop your server so that you're not holding your port open.
All right, that's enough running locally and looking at a pre-built application. Let's get started on our GDID application and get it loaded up into the Google Cloud platform. To begin with, go ahead and download the starter code from our Nugget Lab files. Inside of the 06 Basics Python folder, you're going to find a GAE Nuggets project. And this one is distinctly simpler than the one we were just looking at. We've got our main.py and our app.yaml, of course, and only two templates, the base template and the home template, which is the home page template as well as our CSS file, style.css, inside of a CSS folder. You'll see why it's inside of that folder in the configuration management nugget. This is the application that we are going to load up into Google Cloud Platform. But first, before we do any of that, we do want to run it locally just to make sure it works. It's kind of good practice to load these things in your development environment, execute them locally before you roll any updates into the cloud. So I'm going to come over here to my App Engine Launcher, and I'm going to add existing. And I'm going to browse right out to that particular folder. That was in 06 Basics, GAE Nuggets. I'll go ahead and choose it. Click Add. Now I've got this here ready to launch. I can run it locally, browse to it, and you can see very simply this is all we've got inside of our basic version of the application. So I've gotten rid of all that fake static HTML data that I had down here. You can see the statistics and the leaderboards are all empty. All that stuff is gone. We've just got the overall structure, the overall um, framework that we want to put the data into ready to go. And of course, we have our header up there. And as I scroll down, you can see I've got my footer down here. And if I browse out to the achievements page or the achievers page, I'm going to get a 404 not found because I don't even have my routes hooked up yet. I don't even have templates for achievements or achievers inside of this project. So really just a basic, simple application that we can run. And we can launch it out in the Google Cloud Platform as well. If I come down here, I'm just going to go ahead and stop it. If you want to deploy it out to your project in the Google Cloud, you're simply going to click the Deploy button. Fill in your credentials and click the Sign In button. And we can watch it launch this and roll it up to the Google Cloud Platform. I can also do this same thing again from the command line. So just like I could launch the development server from the command line, if I want, I can deploy from the command line. All I have to do is launch my terminal window here. And in this case, I'm going to run the app cfg.py command. Pass it in the update switch and the path to my project, which is nuggetlab gae 6 basics underscore python forward slash gae nuggets. When I execute this, the first thing I need to do, of course, is sign in. Just like I did with the deploy in the front end, i got to pass in my credentials. And having done that, we can, just like we saw before, watch it uh, launch this application up into the Google Cloud Platform. If I launch my Cloud Platform now, I should be able to see this live on the site. Go to cloud.google.com. I'm already signed in. Go to my console. Choose the project that we're working with. That's GAE Nuggets. And I'll scroll down to my versions here. And we should be able to see Python 06-Basics. So there is the project that I just launched. I can click it and bring this up. Now notice that I've got a URL, a web URL here. And this is the uh, application structure that we were just looking at locally. Now let's go over those files inside of the project just as a basic understanding of what exactly it is we're looking at. The app.yaml file is the basic configuration file. And we're going to go over this in more depth in the configuration and management nugget. But this basically has some information about your application itself along the top, as well as routing and library information along the bottom. Aside from that, I've got my main.py file. This is where I'm running all of my Python code from. And again, you can see down here at the bottom, I have the, the handlers for the routes, or rather the catching of the handlers. So the routes get passed into main.py. Main.py has this little application object down here that's going to catch those routes as they get passed in and tell me what to do with them. Other than that, the other two really big important files that I have here are the base template and the home template. And just to show you what they look like real quick, I'm going to launch, uh, I'll open it up in Sublime Text, the base template. So this is really just HTML code you can see here. This is um, shouldn't look spectacular or different at all. The only thing you're going to notice that's different is I've got my header defined. Below that, I've got my footer defined. And in the middle, I've got these little Jinja handles, block, content, and block. What does that mean? Well, that's where the actual content is going to be inserted. When I look at the home.template, for instance, which is the template file that's getting returned for the home page, 
I can see that it says extends base dot template and then defines the block content and then here's my actual home page HTML so this is how I'm going to be able to reuse the header and the footer inside of that base template over and over and over I'm just going to create a different dot template file for each of my content pages and that will bring in the uh, base template and that concludes this demonstration nugget on App Engine Basics in Python. So just to review, we went over the overall project structure for our Python application, which is going to be really simple, just a root level folder where we're going to store our templates and our YAML files and our main.py, our Python code, and one subfolder, a CSS folder, to hold our CSS file because that's going to be a static file. We launched it in our development web server. We ran it locally, both with the Google App Launcher as well as from the command line utility. And we deployed it out to the cloud, again, both from the Google App Launcher and the command line utility, appcfg.py. Lastly, we took a look at the actual code itself. We went over briefly the Jinja templating language and how we're going to use that to frame out or skeleton out our application and reuse as much code as possible. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.